Well, thank you very much, and hello to everybody. I'm very happy to be here talking to you about Venezuela. And particularly, I'm very happy to share this space together with uh, the interim president, Juan Guaido. Venezuela is going to continue being a priority for the U.S. and for the world. Uh, our uh, political goals have been consistent and uh, uh, free elections and fair elections so that the, uh, the, the people uh, determine their own destiny. And uh, the, uh, the crimes of uh, human trafficking and crimes and drug trafficking, uh, it's uh, going to have to end because uh, it's so the question is not is not the the system or whatever or to find resources. the question is if Maduro and those who are around him are going to be able uh, actually put above Venezuela their own interest there is no doubt that that the model actually they, they can provide for the people of Venezuela and then they cannot uh, offer progress the failure has nothing to do with the sanctions Democratic countries cannot change uh, our way to uh, help uh, that uh, regime to stay in power, uh, putting in uh, peril uh, the security of the people. I would like to say that that uh, Juan Guaido, the interim president, and also the international community are there. Sixty countries declared that the uh, recent election was a fraud. And um, so they are not going to consider the new thing, uh, the new government as a legitimate uh, government, because uh, there is a call for the international community to actually uh, highlight all the human rights, and they actually build uh, student groups and also um, uh, health uh, practitioners and a popular consultation in which uh, millions of um, Venezuelans participated in the last and uh, Nicolas Maduro. This is a ray of hope for Venezuela. The fact that they actually have actually, uh, actually, that actually this is a, a regime that has been accused of uh, 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 crimes. Um, they stole the election in 2018, and then they also can uh, steal some others. Not Maduro, and um, their uh, uh, people should not uh, continue uh, in power. Clearly, the regime of Maduro is going to try to divide the international community uh, also. Uh, if our goal is to support the people of Venezuela to be able to have free uh, elections, we cannot fall into the trap that Maduro uh, actually is placing to maintain his power. To negotiate, he has to have somebody with whom to be able to negotiate. And with the uh, U.S. and most uh, Democrats, we are going to continue recognizing Juan Guaido as the interim president. Together, we can do a lot to be able to continue and then to be able to have uh, honest negotiations. The U.S. is actually uh, has gone together with a group that actually is actually looking uh, to preserve uh, human rights. And uh, when we uh, establish these actions, the international, uh, the international Union actually has thrown the ball onto the uh, government, and um, the President of Interno Valdo and civil society, um, the consultation was just uh, one step to be able to continue uh, to be able to face uh, the Maduro regime. To build a democratic path is an essential solution, and we know that now we are building an alliance with the civil society in order to amplify democracy. Unfortunately, we've already seen the despicable trend of repression of the government and its representatives. Nick Evans, is that 
testimony, it's a witness of this repression. I'm very proud of the Venezuelan people, uh, all the leaders of the civil society, the National Assembly and President Guaido that keep on fighting against tyranny and return to democracy. The interim president, Juan Guaido, have demonstrated their courage and dedication to Venezuela. In spite of the threats of repression of the regime, these courageous Venezuelans keep fulfilling their responsibilities that the Venezuelan government trust and trusted them. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to be in this event. Now, it's a great uh, pleasure and honor for me. I am very proud of welcoming for the third time second as interim president, the president in chief of Venezuela, Juan Guaido. Welcome, Mr. President. You have the floor. Thank you so much. First of all, my gratitude for the concern, uh, for the condition in Venezuela. Of course, the fight to be able to gain back democracy and the dignity of every Venezuelan for the freedom of our country. Thank you, President and CEO of American Society and Council of the Americas, Susan, and also thank you, Eric Guillermo, our ambassador and vice foreign minister for multilateral affairs in Colombia. Uh, thank you so much for reminding us of our goals of 2021 for Venezuela and for what it implies to uh, gain back uh, democracy. And we know that in Venezuela, our number one goal is to recover democracy, free parliamentary and government elections. But the question is how from now on we can approach the severe crisis faced by Venezuela and by country uh, at a humanitarian level, public uh, affairs of immigrant refugees, among others. How to really uh, face this humanitarian crisis from the diplomatic and international aspects to re reindicate in order to take advantage of the great advantages that we have as Venezuelans faced with this great dictatorship that's been sanctioned by the international court and also by independent uh, organizations of the United Nations and also for the High Commissioners uh, of uh, Human Rights, uh, uh, Ms. Bachelet. This is the goal that we all share in Venezuela, but also in the international community for free and fair elections in order to be able to gain back democracy in Venezuela. This, of course, has to do with the understanding of the mechanisms that we have used of dialogue and negotiation uh, to understand our mistakes and also where we were, went right. What are the pressure mechanisms? Understanding also the goals of the dictatorship. It's important to understand the context within we're fighting in Venezuela. The goal of the dictatorship is to nullify democracy in Venezuela, just like it happened in Cuba at the time and in other countries with uh, totalitarian regimes. Understanding this, the strengthening of the national parliament and also the diplomatic dialogue in Venezuela in order to achieve, first of all, the humanitarian crisis in over 5.4 million of uh, uh, refugees, it also families that are suffering for the loss of their loved ones in Guidia were pushed by hunger as, a, as you know world food program the regime has not allowed it to enter in Venezuela because it's part of the social control mechanisms of Maduro's dictatorship for the discretional distribution of food that's why the world food program unfortunately nowadays is not present in Venezuela although 9.3 million of Venezuelans today are at risk 
of vulnerability and insecurity as far as uh, uh, food supplies. That's why Venezuela, Venezuelans walk towards Colombia, even towards Peru, with high risks using boats that have no type of safety in order to be able to get to Trinidad, Tobago, where they're being returned, where there is a scheme of human trafficking, of also organ trafficking that has been denounced right now. This is the context we think today we, as Venezuelans, are facing a dictatorship that nowadays prefers, for instance, not to uh, reach an agreement with a World Food Program or also uh, being able to achieve a humanitarian space in Venezuela for not allowing the visas, for instance, to uh, 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 Mexico without uh, doctors without borders uh, that are being provided to young workers of an NGO just because they are working right now. We need to point out especially the uh, 111,000 square kilometers kilometers where we have the most important mining reserves in the country and the continent where right now we can find gold, diamonds, uh, bauxite, uh, uh, iron, and but we can have FARC members of LLN that are selling ingredients to locals and resellers uh, allowing smuggling. So now between 70 and 90 percent of gold right now has displaced indigenous communities and has destroyed the Amazon in the uh, uh, serious uh, the crisis uh, reselling to uh, smugglers. And just exactly what the Vice Foreign Minister has pointed out and uh, about this persecution also. Well, let's not lose sight of the pandemic. We don't have official figures right now. The uh, PCRs um, are not being administered based on the advice of the uh, multilateral agencies that are collaborating right now. And I'm just telling about the goals, humanitarian, diplomatic, social, political goals. I'm mentioning them so that we can have a right analysis in order to achieve the goals in different areas. In the humanitarian level, we have to say that unfortunately dictatorship is far from uh, approaching uh, NGOs, not allowing them in order to uh, help millions of refugees in uh, Venezuela. The persecution to refugees uh, persecution to uh, uh, migration by sea, diplomatically, the dialogue will be key from the humanitarian point of view, but also in order to compensate the great advantages that now Venezuelans have facing this uh, dictatorship, this lack of recognition to the parliament. This is going to be key right now to acknowledge the complexity that we face of a, a multifactorial problem, as uh, the Vice Foreign Minister from Colombia was pointing out. This is central right now for us Venezuelans. Part of this diagnosis uh, was a very tough uh, uh, situation has to do with what right now we are promoting from the Congress, from the government uh, in charge, and the civil society participation right now. The dialogue, the interaction, the uh, uh, construction of the majority in Venezuela towards the respect that has been persecuted by the dictatorship, which is to annul democracy. That's why they closed um, a, a communication uh, m m tools and they ended two newspapers like Panorama that had no role for years in the country right now. So from this perspective, from this uh, uh, crude 
reality that we are facing, Venezuelans, uh, we need to present uh, resolution alternatives, one, through international parliament, and also to endorse the mandate of fair parliament elections. How to achieve this? The alternative, the previous alternatives in the Dominican Republic, in Norway, for instance, where we really try to uh, achieve this solution, there is an initial learning. The alternative of negotiation cannot be just a negotiation with dictatorship in, in itself. A regime that has been denounced uh, for promoting the most severe famine in the country, in the continent. This cannot just be an additional negotiation. This needs to be responsibility, pressure on the regime in order to force a political solution to the conflict. Why we use this term, to force, which could be interpreted as very tough, because the Maduro dictatorship has proven the fact that they are not interested in a solution. When we talk about uh, alternatives for negotiations, we can talk about mechanisms for alternatives, but also domestic mobilizations. We have talked about in smart negotiations towards uh, corruption in the regime in order to avoid uh, the uh, capital um, uh, outflow, but also international justice. Today, we are in a stage of investigation, but also to uh, prosecute human rights violations up to 2017, for instance, and 2018, 2019, they are being contemplated in this international denouncement. So the construction of alternatives at a diplomatic, diplomatic and political level has to also include alternatives in order to be able to achieve a solution inside Venezuela to reunite also international networks that are being persecuted in Venezuela in order to be able to, for instance, remember the people that live with $1 a month, that's the income of a teacher in Venezuela, $1 a month. That's, what we, that's how we're trying to attempt to translate this to real actions with free and fair elections during this process, during this moment. Additionally, a mechanism of pressure. We need to review and, and also go in depth. This negotiation cannot just be a, neg a negotiation in itself. These are part of additional uh, moments that we need to include uh, internationally. These are key. We all agree that we have to have new elections uh, that will be free and fair. This is a condition for the fight uh, because we have to have a competitive election right now. The message that we send in the world that the methodologies uh, of torture and persecuting and close uh, uh, channels of dictatorship work, uh, but to have that one more day, it would be very harmful for democracies in the world. Uh, above all, that uh, we see today that we actually have to be alert and we have to fight and then learn from past uh, errors, uh, mainly that would be an object, but it also has to be a mechanism. The dictatorship is going to try to change the mediation in some kind of uh, problem. No, it is a mechanism to be able to uh, reach a solution. So this is uh, part of the central elements, and the biggest enemy in Venezuela is uh, the division that Maduro does, not only uh, domestically, uh, but also internationally. 
So generating, for example, the repercussion of the sanctions. Obviously, there is no freedom in Venezuela. There is lack of democracy. And uh, nowadays, uh, another dilemma is whether the elections are going to happen or not. The people want free elections to be able to define again. Uh, another false dilemma of the government is also negotiation or not negotiation as a mechanism uh, to use the concept to be able to gain time um, to, uh, and to delay the process. Today, the dilemma in Venezuela is democracy versus a dictatorship, freedom against oppression. And all these mechanisms, these uh, um, goals for the presidential elections and parliamentary uh, that have to be fair and, uh, and just with uh, responsibility mechanisms and also, of course, uh, with uh, also uh, results uh, because of the reivindication kind of fight that we have for the goal, which is taking into account all the errors that we um, somehow committed in the past, uh, imposed uh, basically initially because the decisions didn't want to come to understand it. But also, these have to be guarantees for all the sectors that do want to reach an agreement in Venezuela. To conclude, in spite of our fight and the persecution, we continue being strong. 146 representatives, the 5th of January, actually maintain the position firm, and there is a unanimous position of all the different uh, entities in Venezuela and governments in Venezuela to be able to find a solution and uh, to be able to read uh, uh, of the political oppression uh, that Venezuela is going to. So society and the republic are vulnerable because of all this. And we are sure, totally sure, that in spite that democracy is vulnerable all over the world, uh, nowadays, uh, freedom will always win, and uh, the human race is going to prevail also in Venezuela. Venezuela nowadays is a country that is suffering under a dictatorship against the citizens. And then 5.4 million refugees prove that the persecution for uh, the uh, humanitarian workers in Venezuela uh, is obvious. We have uh, to actually uh, have negotiations with allied uh, countries to be able, because, uh, you know, we have to do that because uh, this is the best option, not only to resist, but also to find uh, the tools of uh, diplomatic and social and other types of tools to be able to achieve a change in Venezuela. So thank you very much.